Welcome to our news, the weekend edition, and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Knowles, topping the news. In the wake of three shooting deaths in less than 24 hours, the Royal Bahamas Police Force will now restructure and redouble its efforts to introduce a number of new crime-fighting initiatives. The National Security Minister convened meetings with top brass of the police force on Saturday to review the current policing strategy. National Security Minister Marvin Dames revealed yesterday that there are 268 people currently out on bail and being electronically monitored. Out of that number, 70 are being monitored for homicides, 18 for attempted murders, 102 for armed robberies, and 59 for firearm offenses. The police have informed me that they have done a review of persons out on bail and, not, and, and, and who are not in compliance with their bail conditions. They have, dis they have discovered that of the more than 50 persons who are not in compliance of their bail conditions, they have already begun the process of arresting those persons and having their bail revoked. In recent weeks, several people out on bail have been killed. Dame says Intel reveals that murders occurred in those hotspot areas of Pinewood Gardens, Camp Road, Baintown, Yellow Elder, and Carmichael. These areas will now see increased patrols, as well as increased monitoring of CCTV and other technology resources to curtail violent crime. We cannot continue to have unabated persons losing their lives in these communities, no matter who they are and what they're engaged in. As firearms play a significant role in the country's crime challenges, the National Security Minister says from an intelligence perspective, there will be an increased focus on firearm traffickers and bringing them to justice. The force will also take a more aggressive approach in handling drug peddling, the source of many crime problems. Dames also announced the establishment of a National Crime Prevention and a Neighborhood Council, which will be led by Senior Assistant Commissioner Stephen Dean. He insists that police cannot fight crime alone and community involvement is needed. And the establishment of this uh, crime watch and, and crime prevention council will do just that. It will begin this process of, of, of mobilizing the community, getting them involved, getting them connected to the police and working hand in hand with the police and other stakeholders and reducing the high levels of crime in, in this country. Now, in addition to further enhancements of senior command at the divisional level, government will conduct a review of the police force. This review will determine what is the requisite number of officers at any division which has not yet been established. I suspect that shortly we will run a pilot program in terms of addressing this issue to determine its level of effectiveness. We will also move to decentralize once again the central detective unit. The purpose of decentralization is to have detectives at stations to readily respond to serious matters on a timely basis. From a legislative approach, Dame says government will soon introduce crime prevention bills specifically for the National Anti-Corruption Agency and the establishment of a national intelligence agency. He reiterated that government is committed to stomping out crime and pledged to use all resources at its disposal to ensure all Bahamians are safe. I would like to send a warning out to all of those persons who continue to live a life of crime. Moving forward, we intend to make your life very uncomfortable. We will use every resource at our disposal to ensure that you are made to account for your wrongdoings. This is a promise. Well, Senior Pastor of the Kingdom Summit, Carlos Reed, admits that the country is facing a dangerous problem with the increase in the number of dangerous street gangs. According to Reed, some of these gangs are not only establishing a rivalry with other street gangs, but they are now having inter-gang rivalries, which he believes is leading to the growing murder count. You know, our country is experiencing an epidemic now with this gang war. You know, even where we stand right now, this, this, this borderline uh, 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 a middle ground for two uh, warring sections. 
of these gangs right now. Uh, when we look at what's going on in our country, we need to be able to address this problem from the source of the problem. How do we now bring some of these young men together to be able to talk about their issues and solve some of their problems? With the murder count now at 88 following three separate shooting incidents in three areas considered crime hotspots, Reed says the work has to start now. We have a program that's on the drawing board right now that's called Violence Interrupters. Uh, these uh, young persons or persons that have been involved in crime, have been on the street that we're now bringing together to be able to intervene in a lot of these situations. We have uh, gotten some people from all of the different hotspots and in very short order we looking to, to launch that out. In other news this evening, Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson is sending a stern warning to the Minnesota administration asserting that the union is never scared to fight on behalf of its members. Wilson made the comments following an extensive meeting with the new Education Minister Jeff Lloyd this past week. Wilson says while the meeting went well, the government now has to put its money where its mouth is. Jasmine Brown reports. I'm going to let you know that we ain't never scared and the work has to be done and whatever words you would have spoken to us has to be backed up by action. Wilson says during that three-hour meeting, a number of topics were discussed, including school repairs, teacher payouts, and special education programs. Wilson says while the talks were productive, she hopes the ministry will follow through with those promises and treat the union as a partner and not an enemy. We are hopeful, but we expect things to happen, and we want it to happen in a systematic way and where the union is consulted and we are real partners with you. Wilson says the union plans on holding the government accountable for what the former administration did not accomplish, such as thousands of dollars of payouts for teachers. Yes, we want to do the school repairs. Yes, we want to make sure that the teachers get their pay. Yes, we want our $1,000 September 2017. In, and, and they've agreed that we will be getting it. That's important. We want to make sure that all of the millions of dollars in back pay that I've been talking about for the last 12 years, we want to make sure that that's paid to the teachers. Despite the stern warning, Wilson says she believes they can work together because they all want the same thing, a better education system that children can thrive in. I believe you're going to hear much more from the union and the ministry working together to ensure that we get education on the right track. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Thanks, Jasmine. In just a matter of weeks, union president John Pinder will be stepping down. After 15 years of heading one of the country's largest unions, Pinder says he has a lot to be proud of, but still hasn't accomplished everything he wanted to. No, I have not been able to accomplish at least 30% of the things I wanted to accomplish, I've been able to accomplish during my 15 years as president of the union. One of the things I wanted to do was get agency shop. Still, on, still wasn't able to get agency shopping in, in the general public service, and I hope that uh, the next administration is able to do that. I was this close to getting it done, very close to getting that done. But again, there were some challenges. Uh, we were trying to, of uh, course, there to be an amendment to the Industrial Relations Act that would speak to once a union gets recognition, it should be able to get agency shop simultaneously. But if there's a prejudice uh, policy that says you need 50 plus one to get the recognition, but they want to have 60 percent to get the agency shop. And that's a, that's a very prejudiced uh, uh, um, law in there. Pinder said he is stepping down because it appears he has to give a few more years to the public service to qualify for pension. He said if the right team wins, the Bahamas Public Service Union should still be in good hands. Um, we were trying to do a housing project. I always had in mind to, for the union to do a housing project. Uh, we had several, we made several attempts at that and um, was not able to get that accomplished. And uh, East Street sell property and some property in the northern region. I wanted to expand on them, build a bigger hall, um, something uh, that would have been uh, on a top, cutting edge of technology as relates to be able to host even an international conferences uh, for the trade union movement. Uh, wasn't able to raise the funds to do that. Uh, a lot of things is now coming into vision as I'm on my way out. Um, after 15 years of being the president and 
I only have 21 active years in the public service. I have applied to the former government to bridge those years, make them pensionable, but I have not gotten any response. And so um, in my best interest, at age 55, I have to give the government at least nine more years to get a good pension. I better head back to the public service. Well, since launching number portability earlier this year, the country's newest mobile provider has welcomed thousands of mobile customers to the new network. Our Christina McNeil tells us what else Alive has in store for Bahamians. It's been just four months since number portability was launched, allowing customers to keep their mobile number if they decide to change mobile service providers. In that time, Chief Alive Officer Damian Blackburn says more than 5,000 users have taken advantage of the process, and that figure is growing daily despite some challenges early on. The number of challenges we've had to overcome um, uh, uh, that were different to, to the first four islands that we that, uh, that we launched on. Uh, it, it's taken time, not all the things have been in our control, but uh, I'm delighted to say, you know, we've, we've taken each challenge one after another, we've found an answer and, and, and we're there on those first three. On Friday, Alive launched on Bimini, welcoming residents on that island to join the network that boasts its data, video and voice quality. Blackburn tells our news that he's hopeful that by the end of 2017, Alive will be well on its way to delivering service to every island Bahamians live on. And number portability has been a major part of that growth. People being able to move their number that they've, they've loved and cherished for many, many years um, to Alive, uh, that, that functionality came on stream right at the end of April in early May. Um, and uh, we've welcomed uh, over 5,000 people now who've moved their numbers to us. Thank you very much to all those people who've done it. Um, the system works pretty smoothly now. Um, there have been some glitches along the way, and thanks for the patience of the people who, 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 who experienced some of those glitches. However, Alive is still the new kid on the block. Blackburn notes that the growth seen over the past few months was only possible due to the team of Bahamians who helped to grow the brand from the ground up. No, thank you very much um, to, to, to everybody in the Bahamas who continues to give us an ama amazing support. Thank you. We, we, we're working very hard every day here in the Alive team. Thank you very much to the Alive team who really, really have taken this challenge on of creating this world-class uh, mobile network operator and, and a world-class brand that the, bah the Bahamas can be very proud of. Um, the brand, the Alive brand, has been made by uh, has been made by Bahamians. Alive is expected to expand to Andros and Exuma next. Reporting Good for our day news, day. I'm Christina McNeil. Thanks, Christina, and we will take a break here. But still ahead tonight, the quest begins to crowning the next Miss Universe Bahamas. That story and more when our news returns. Summer. We are alive. I'm free to live my life, yeah. Free to be me, yeah. The way I want to be. Doing the things that I want to do. Yes, I'm living my life. It's a big deal business. Big deal. Taste the flavor. You can't resist. It's, it's nice, boy. When me catch the aroma, I feel make me harder. A big deal time, no, yeah. So we stop at KFC, get the big deal. All the meal deal, fries and drinks. What a fact, it's the real deal. Original spicy barbecue. When we step in KFC with the big deal. 
crew, yeah. I said it's a big deal business. Taste the flavor, you can't resist this. And when we catch the aroma, I feel make me harder. A big deal time, no, yeah. KFC, it's finger licking good. Need added moisture on your baby's scalp and skin? Johnson's Baby Oil Gel locks in up to 10 times more moisture than any ordinary lotion. If you're a mommy-to-be, purchase any Johnson & Johnson product and have your baby shower sponsored by Johnson's. $1,500 in gifts and prizes. Johnson & Johnson products distributed by Lowe's Wholesale Drug Agencies Limited. The Miss Universe Bahamas franchise is under new ownership. Shimmer and Sparkle is the new licensee for the local preliminary to the Miss Universe pageant. And the quest to the crowning of Miss Universe Bahamas 2017 got underway with the contestants' debut during an intimate cocktail reception on Friday. Eight beautiful, accomplished and poised young ladies are vying for the coveted title. National Director Loretta Thomas believes that with the caliber of ladies competing this year, they will change the stereotype surrounding pageantry. So we are definitely moving in the direction of and moving away from the stereotype that pageantry is all about beauty and no substance. Tonight, if you have the opportunity to witness eight of these young ladies introduce themselves, you would be proud as a Bahamian and more so proud as a Bahamian woman to see what was unveiled this evening. Among this year's contestants are a medical doctor, a fourth year medical student, a scientist and an entrepreneur. Thomas says the organization will place heavy emphasis on women empowerment and community involvement. We'll see an organization that is active and, and not active only on a um, pageantry platform, but actively working in the community actively working with um, associations like the, the AIDS Foundation. That's definitely one of our endeavors, the AIDS Foundation. We're also very interested in working with the Women's Crisis Center. That's going to be new for us. So we are happy to get involved in the community. We're happy to bring awareness to women's issues or issues affecting adversely or positively affecting women and children. So you are going to see a very active organization under our new leadership. And with the quality of contestants entered in the competition this year, Thomas promises it will be an, a spectacular event. And what's going to be a little different is we do not have little or small events leading up to the pageant. It is going to be a grand affair, a spectacular opening with fabulous costumes, which will lead into the swimsuit competition, the evening gown competition, and then the unveiling of our new Miss Universe Bahamas. Miss Universe Bahamas will be held on Saturday, September 16th at the Atlantis Theater on Paradise Island. Tickets for the Grand Affair are priced at $75 and $100 and go on sale this week. You're watching the best in Bahamian news. There is more after the break. <music> 